for Mary's 50th birthday, uh, a friend of mine had called me up and asked me if I wanted to buy it. She'd always loved Morgan's because of the bonnet strap. So uh, he brought it over to the house and we were looking at it and Mary rolls up and I said, Mary, what do you think of this? She said, it's beautiful. I said, well, I will buy that for you for your 50th birthday if you would like to have that. Oh, no, no, that's too expensive. God is so pretty. <laughs> So it took uh, about 10 minutes to talk her into it. And uh, we finally decided to buy that. Uh, my friend Mark had owned this car for about 19 years. He bought it in Annapolis, Maryland. The car was originally British Racing Green. The tan interior was in the car when he bought it. He had it painted this lovely shade of burgundy because he already had a British Racing Green Morgan. And the car was painted about 37 years ago. So it's an old paint job and the interior is even older. The car has a lot of patina. But it's been a garage queen pretty much for the, at least the last 40 years. We drive it on a semi-regular basis. We try to take it out uh, fairly frequently. We do go to the Morgan meets with it. We take it to car shows. We take it out on the parkway. We take it on picnics to various British Auto Club functions mm -hmm. and just basically drive it and enjoy it quite surprised that they still make the exact same, you know, with modern updates. The same body style is still available. Yeah. Um, and that's what they that, use BMW engines now. Right. They're a whole lot more expensive. <laughs> so tell me what's in that. That's got a Triumph TR4 motor. Okay. Uh, you'll notice that there are no air cleaners on those carburetors. That is factory correct because once you put the bonnet down, there's not enough room for the air cleaners. Yeah. You know, they're a scant inch or less from the carburetors themselves. Uh, they make a wedge-shaped funnel with the air cleaner back towards the firewall, but that starves the front carburetor. It doesn't work real well, so that's the way the factory made it. Still. And it's a uh, Moss crash box is the transmission. That's a racing transmission out of the uh, 50s. Mm -hmm. The same transmission they use in Jaguar XK 120s, 140s, 150s, and early E-types. Non-synchronized first, the factory claims the synchronizer on second and third, but you got to be, you got to look for it pretty closely. <laughs> Absolutely, you have to double clutch on the way down. You just take your time on the way up. It's a fun car to drive, and once you master that transmission, it's very satisfying to drive briskly. It, it takes a knack, yeah, so. and you do not want to break that transmission. So, the, so that Triumph motor is a four-cylinder. It is. It's a straight four, like one point something, one point uh, six. That's eight, I think about something? two three or two four. Oh, it's big. It's a pretty. It's it a actually biggie. started out as a tractor motor. Lots of torque, not a whole lot of RPM. It'll pull in third gear from about anywhere. The car weighs about 1,900 pounds. Yes, you, you know, you don't need a whole lot of yeah. motor. Actually, for the, the motor and the weight, it's very sprightly to drive. Yeah. You know, you can get a pretty good run of speed with it. Uh, as a matter of fact, not very long after we bought the car, we went down to Virginia International Raceway for a vintage car race and on lunch break they led a lot of cars out to uh, to go around the track you know have some laps and I went out behind an Aston Martin DB5 oh. and I was vainly trying to keep up with it, it was bomb and driver? Mary kept turning different shades of purple but uh, that, that was that was a whole lot of fun this car actually is relatively rare in its own right Morgan hand builds all of their cars mm -hmm. in the 50s and 60s they might have made 400, 450 cars a year total production. About 10% of that was the four-seaters. So you don't see very wow. many four-seaters. So we uh, estimate that in 1963, they might have made about 45 Morgan plus four four-seaters. Wow, nice. So it's not a common car at all. This car was imported to Fergus Fine Motors in New York. 62 or 63 a lot of these cars when they were titled they were titled when they were sold not when they were built you know so yeah. this was sold in 1963 and the car has got about 36,000 miles on it when we bought it it had about 31 so we've put about 5,000 miles on it and we've owned it for I can't tell you that because I told you I got it when Mary was 50 and I'd be giving <laughs> away her age that's fair enough <laughs> but we've had it a pretty good while Mary yeah. would you like to add your story my story is when I was about six years old, I had three older brothers, and the oldest one was 12 years older than me, so he used to take me like out 
when he was running errands and stuff. And we went to a dry cleaners that doesn't exist anymore. And I saw this car. My father had always had sports cars. The boys always had sports cars. And I just grew up around them. And I didn't know what it was, but it was a Morgan. And at six years old, I fell in love with it. And I said, someday I want to own a Morgan. Not ever thinking I would. The interesting thing was, he was right, the bonnet strap at six was what attracted me. <laughs> what was really neat about it was I always said, you know, one day I'd love to own a Morgan. And since we've been going to the Morgan meets, there is a guy there who has another Morgan. And uh, he went to Roanoke College. Same time that I saw the car, it was his mm -hmm. car, and he still owns it. I like the four-seater because actually you can put people in the back, can't go very far because yeah. there's no seat belts back there. Comfortable for a couple hours or bearable for a couple um, hours? This car, the front <laughs> suspension was designed in 1909. It's called a sliding pillar suspension. When you hear about cars that ride like an ox cart, this is the one they're talking about. <laughs> So since you've had it, have you had to do anything to it? Have you ma made any changes to it? I've had, had a little bit of front end maintenance done to it. My good buddy Tom, who is a master mechanic on uh, British cars, he maintained the car so I knew when I bought it that it was in excellent mechanical condition. You know, it really hasn't required a whole lot of maintenance. That's, That's about as basic as cars get. There's nothing on that car that doesn't really need to be there. Uh, yeah. you know, not even a check engine light. The uh, earlier Morgans had flat radiators. This is a round nose car. When they went to the round nose cars, you know, a lot of the purists uh, were just uh, flabbergasted. Oh, how can you ruin the looks of it like that? But, you know, it caught on pretty quickly. Personally, I think they look a little better, a little more aerodynamic, but cars don't have this kind of character anymore. So there's a flat rad and a round nose on the early Morgans. Flat rads, I think, started about 38 oh, or wow, so, sweet. and they went into the round nose cars in the mid 50s. The same basic body style still available today from the manufacturer. Well, the mirrors being out there on the front fenders look really, really cool. They're <laughs> Basically useless. You can see if there's someone on your extreme panel, but you can also turn your head and see them too. It just looks cool being mounted up there on the uh, on the fenders. Most of the Morgans have a uh, wire wheel. You see a lot of them with chrome wire wheels. Now, this car was made with the disc wheels, which kind of sets it off a little bit, I think. It certainly would look pretty with uh, chrome wires, but steel wheels are certainly a whole lot more round. When you're driving this car, you get a very real sense of open air. You're, you're quite exposed. You can actually be sitting in either of the seats and reach down and touch the asphalt. Wedding. We've used it in a couple of weddings. Uh, I delivered a bride in an outdoor wedding to the aisle in that car. And uh, in another wedding, the uh, bride and groom, uh, after the wedding, drove off. And this is also an outdoor wedding. They drove away from the wedding in the car. You let them go a whole lot. <laughs> the dash is, has quite an extra amount of patina. You can see there's a, a little bit of oil has seeped into the bottom of the dash over the last 50 odd years. That does not look like a over polished plastic dashboard. That's one of the things I kind of like about it. I guess I could pull the dashboard off and make it perfect, but uh, I, I kind of, you know, it took 50 odd years for it to look like that. I'm a little inclined to leave it that way. Anybody can have a shiny dashboard. That one's got character. This car is not fast by today's standards by any means, but a lot of times it's more fun to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. This was Morgan's family car. You know, it had four seats. This is what you drove your family around in. Often we get, is that a kit car? You know, they'll ask, uh, you hear a lot, is that an MG? And occasionally you'll have people come up and say, man, a Morgan. Those people, you know, they know what sports cars are, if they actually know what a Morgan is. Part of the joy of owning one of these things and driving it around is that pretty much anywhere you park it, you draw a little bit of a crowd. You know, people want to stop and talk about it and, you know, what is this? And, of course, there's the typical questions. How fast is it? How much does it cost? The answer is, I don't know. I'm not brave enough to take this thing up to a top end. I think it'll do about 100, somewhere around there. The answer to the value is, whatever someone will pay me for it. I had always been attracted to the foreign car, sports car scene, and I had opportunity to buy this Morgan. I just really liked it, and, and of course Mary always wanted one, so we just decided to bite that bullet and buy it. This is the only Morgan I've owned, and uh, it was a keeper from the get-go. So do you love your Morgan, Mary? I love my Morgan.